Baby washed down the drain just after birth. Firefighters got her out only to find she wasn't breathing. 911 ENS received a report of a man who heard the baby's cries from the toilet wall. Firefighters immediately arrived at the scene, but Bobby didn't hear anything in the toilet. The caller was adamant that he had definitely heard the baby's voice. Bobby took out his stethoscope and listened carefully on the wall. He banged on the wall again and again. Two seconds later, he heard a faint cry. He marks the source of the sound and says he's going to take out the toilet pipe. Buckley excitedly wielded the axe and intended to use the force to cut through the wall. Bobby immediately stopped him and asked him to think about whether it would hurt the baby. Then he brought the saw and cut a slit in the wall. He used a hammer to carefully crack open the wall. When the wall was almost loose, the firefighters decided to peel back the wall by hand to avoid hurting the baby. To reveal the pipe stuck in the baby, Henry L. looked at the bent pipe and realized that if someone flushed the toilet upstairs, the baby would be flushed down the drain. So she immediately went upstairs and shouted at everyone not to flush the toilet now. Upstairs, LAPD officers were going door to door looking for the underage girl who had given birth to the baby. When police officers, Athena knocked on the door of house number 513. The residents inside were clearly panicked and closed the door before they could even finish listening. This caught Athena's attention. She looked down the hallway and found blood dripping on the floor and followed the blood trail to a construction site. Athena found the sewer opening where the baby had been thrown. Meanwhile, Firefighters had cut down the pipe and saw that the baby was indeed stuck inside. But because the baby was stuck so tightly, they couldn't get her out no matter how hard they pushed. Bobby asked Buckley to bring lubricant to fill the inside of the pipe, then slowly pushed out the baby. But the baby had been deprived of oxygen for so long that she couldn't breathe. Bobby repeatedly tapped her hard, but to no avail. Maybe her airway's blocked. Yeah. Buckley immediately got a respirator and tried to suck the foreign body out. When he was almost there, he put his finger into the baby's esophagus and carefully picked out the blocked foreign body. The baby finally breathed and started to cry. They all breathed a sigh of relief, but the baby's condition was very urgent and needed to be taken to the hospital immediately in order for the baby to receive treatment faster. Instead of waiting for the elevator, Buckley grabbed the baby and raced down the stairs. She was taken to the fire truck with her mother, but on the way, the baby suddenly lost her pulse. Is she gonna die? Bobby grabbed the girl's hand and held it close to the baby. She miraculously held her mother's hand. Maybe that's the magic of blood ties. Even if the baby was once abandoned, it still remembers and loves the taste of its mother. Such cases are not uncommon in life. Sexual intercourse is something that cannot be controlled. But to be born without raising a child and abandoning it is an abominable act. Once you choose to bring a child into the world, you should assume the responsibility as a parent. After all, every child is innocent. But it didn't take long for the most exciting report to come in. A girl's neck was wrapped around a python and she couldn't breathe. But the suffocating love was coming for her baby. The woman is being choked by the python. Just as she was about to suffocate, firefighters kicked open the door and were stunned by the sight. The room was crawling with all kinds of snakes. There was a dense concentration of both poisonous and non-poisonous snakes. This scared the firefighters. After 10 seconds, Bobby found the woman being strangled by the python. He tried to pull the python away with his hands, but the snake showed no sign of letting go of her. Bobby, it's no use. That thing is like 10 feet long. Its constriction strength is like 50 pounds per square inch. Oh my Buckley naively said he could punch the python. Bobby tells him not to be a fool and brag about it. This is a boa constrictor, not a bar drunk. Henrietta offers to anesthetize the snake to knock it out. But once the anesthetic is administered, it takes a few minutes to take effect. She obviously couldn't wait that long. I think we're gonna have to put it down. Uh, kill it! Kill it! No! No! Um, kill no! It, just kill it. Henrietta was adamant that the snake should not be killed and that it was not deadly. It was only natural for it to wrap itself around the woman's neck. The woman is to blame for being stupid enough to bring the snake home. But she was already strangled by the snake until her lips turned purple. If this continues, she'll lose her breath in a minute. Buckley was in a hurry to save her life and couldn't care less about the rules. He chopped off the snake's head with an axe. Then the python's body went limp. She finally regained her breath. She looked at the heroic and handsome. Buckley suddenly had other desires. After everyone returned to the fire station, Buckley was the only one who was late in returning to the team. Bobby came to the site of Buckley's fire truck according to its location. There is a fire ladder to the roof of the building, but there was no danger at the scene. Bobby went up the stairs to the roof and saw Buckley and the snake girl doing sports. So Bobby fired Buckley right away. The fire department will never keep a person like him.
who has no respect for the firefighters. Not to mention that this is not the first time Buckley made a mistake. Just two days ago, Buckley was driving a fire truck on duty when he suddenly met a girl driving a sports car. The two of them had sex in the fire truck just by making eye contact. Buckley was disciplined for this, but Bobby didn't expect him to correct his mistake. Women side by side. When you swing your dick around, you disrespect them. Buckley explained that he may have a lecherous disease, so he was born to be horny and cannot control the lower half of the body. But this does not affect his work. Bobby was furious at his words. He thinks that since Buckley chose this job, he has to put all thoughts behind him. I don't care if you got problems with your wife, with money, with alcohol, with keeping it in your pants, disrespecting our firehouse and this fire department. Buckley begged Bobby to give him a second chance. He may have been a bit of a playboy, but he did like the job. Being a firefighter gives him a purpose, but Bobby has already made up his mind to fire him. Just as he was packing up his things, an emergency occurred. A nine-year-old girl was robbed in her home, and it was this case that turned the tables on Buckley's departure from the fire department. The nine-year-old girl called the police to report that two robbers had broken into her home. The girl heard the break-in and ran upstairs to hide. The police wanted to know where her house was, but since she had just moved into the house, she didn't know the exact address. Only that it was brown. The garage and door were white. There was a pink bike at the door. However, there were too many houses that fit these characteristics. The whole area is full of houses with the same appearance. The officers lost more clues and drove around in their cars. So Athena had to call in a fire truck to help. It just so happened that Buckley, who had been fired and was free, was available. So, she had Buckley drive down the street with his siren blaring. So that once the call center hears the siren on the phone, it will be able to locate the girl by the sound. However, at this moment the girl sneaked down the stairs. Trying to sneak away, she was unlucky to run into the robbers. But she reacted quickly to hide under the table, temporarily escaped a disaster. At that moment, Buckley's fire truck just drove by the girl's house. The police heard the sirens. We got it. That's it. You just passed her, cowboy. Buckley turned around and spotted a pink bicycle. He then stopped the girl's mother, who was driving home, and pulled her aside in a hurry. Athena took the opportunity to enter the house through the back door, but then the girl ran out again. She wasn't so lucky this time and was caught by the robber. Her cell phone was left on the far side. The girl screamed in fear, fearing for the girl's safety. The responding officers immediately negotiated with the robber and told him not to hurt her. She said that the police were already coming, so they couldn't get away, but as long as it didn't hurt the girl. The responding officers could help them escape. The robbers chose to trust the her and put the girl in the locker. They ran out the back door as instructed by the responding officers, just as they were aimed by Athena with her gun. One of the skinny robbers pushed his partner toward Athena. He then quickly ran into the room and took the girl out of the house. The little girl bit the robber's arm. The robber felt the pain and threw her to the ground. Then he immediately drove his motorcycle to escape, but his escape route was blocked by the police in their cars. So he turned his motorcycle around and shot at Athena, but he was shot by a water pistol by Buckley, who was waiting for him and fell to the ground, unable to move. By the time Buckley got back to the firehouse, Bobby and the other teammates had been waiting for him for a long time. He learned it from Athena that Buckley had done a good job on the mission. She hoped that Bobby would give him another chance. But Bobby still didn't want to keep him as a firefighter. I absolutely do get what a privilege it is to serve her. And you know what? You were right to fire me. I was a punk. Hell, I still am one. But I'm a punk who understands what he lost. In fact, Bobby wanted to hear his reflections after he knew that Evan had truly repented this time. Go get dressed. Buckley won't have to be fired. He'll stay in the fire department and work alongside his teammates where there's a need. There's 911, and when night falls, the nightlife officially begins. Two men went to sit on a roller coaster that was very popular on the internet, but they had just experienced the thrill of a fast descent when a man was thrown off.